It's mailbag Monday number 48, New Year's Eve edition. Woohoo, let's get busy here. In the interest of not being predictable, I've decided to go with a non dark beer this week. A local beer, of course. Um, from Farmery. This is the Great White North Belgian Wheat Ale. Trivia, the Hudson Bay coastline in northern Manitoba is home to the world's largest population of beluga whales. I did not know that. Let's give her a taste. Yep, that is exactly what I would have expected from a Belgian wheat ale. That's not bad, actually. It's clarifying nicely in the glass, holding its head pretty well. Okay, let's get started with card quantity one. Nothing else on the back side. Is card something like... No, it's nothing like card. It's not even plastic sheet. It is a bunch of short DuPont jumpers. I mean, these things just come in handy. Yeah, you could use wire, just plain old telephone wire or Cat5 wire. And I often do, as witnessed on, what is this, a little buck converter or boost converter or something. But for breadboarding, these things just come in handy. They're simple, they're easy, they're color-coded. Not that color-coding means a lot to me, being, you know, somewhat colorblind. But they, uh, it, it does help. So what do you got here? Looks like about 40 of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So 40 of them. These are the short ones. Um, what do they call them? 11 centimeters, 12 centimeters, 120 millimeters, probably. Um, and I find that those are the size that I run out of first when I'm in the middle of a project, just because, yeah, they're, they're short and they're handy. So I got more. 40 times breadboard DuPont jump wire male, male, female, 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 10, 20, 30 centimeter jumper cable for Arduino from Fashion Jewelries. Uh, 40 pieces, various different lengths, but I chose the 10 centimeter ones, male to male. I actually got these at auction for 80 cents for the pack of 40. Um, the regular price is buck 49, so a bit of a discount, but, uh, not too much. They're still not that expensive anyway. All right, next in. Let's see if this is anything more interesting and exciting. Electronics Quantity 1. Feels pretty full. I'm thinking there's more than one in here of whatever it is. Oh, yeah, it's a whole bunch of transistors of some description. These are IRF9540N. Anybody recognize that part number? I don't exactly. Should we try and figure them out? Or should we just go to the listing? Oh, let's try and figure them out. This thing's usually pretty good. I'm thinking that it might be a MOSFET. It is. It's a P-channel MOSFET specifically. Five times IRF 9540 P-channel power MOSFET. 20, oh, 23 amps? 100 volts? Wow. Uh, TL220IR from Survey 2014. Somebody I've bought from several times in the past. So they're selling five of them for $1.35 at the moment. I got 25 I paid six dollars and seventy three cents. The current price for five five packs of five is six seventy five, so a couple of cents more, but nothing significant. Not too much more down here in the description. So since there isn't much information in there, we'll get the real data sheet and find out what's actually going on. Maximum power dissipation hundred and fifty watts. Wow. Drain source voltage limit, 100 volts. 
continuous drain current 19 amps at 25 Celsius or 13 amps at 100 degrees Celsius Wow that thing is a beast and it claims to work up to 175 degrees Celsius oh, okay it looks like it wants a little bit higher voltage to turn it on solidly it's not quite a logic level so I might have to uh, slam it a little bit harder but it should probably come on at logic level yeah so there's the full on volt gate source is 10 volts to get 0.2 of an ohm RDS okay what do we have here cable plug it says feels like it's over at that end of the package you never know what you're gonna get so you don't want to slice into it oh okay it's an RF adapter it is an RF adapter from BNC to I think that's the tiny little connector that I whose name I can't remember that goes with the uh, software defined radio things hang on let me grab it so yeah that is in fact that mating connector okay so now I can use antennas and stuff that have B and C I've already got one adapter for uh, F type which is the North American cable TV and an antenna related antenna type thing um, it's a 75 ohm connector and then I've got these cheesy little antennas that came with the things which fit onto there so that should give me some variety of ways to get signal into these little things 15 centimeter cable BNC female jack to MCX male plug right angle RG316 6 inch pigtail B1 okay uh, so MCX male plug is what that little connector down there is uh, RG316 is this type of cable and everything else is pretty much self-explanatory BNC is that guy there from Bruce Shark Dash 001 current price is 284 I paid according to my notes two dollars and 23 cents which isn't much of a jump not much really to say about it it's 50 ohm characteristic impedance based on the cable type yeah nickel plating on the BNC gold plating theoretically maybe a molecule thick if it is actually gold on the mail connector I'm liking that I'm not usually one for a Belgian uh, wheat beer but this is this is not too bad compared to some that I've had this could grow on me. anyway next thing we have is LED module I always like a good LED module oh well hello okay so first of all it's an LCD module but more specifically it is an LCD keypad shield so we have a typical LCD module there two lines by 16 or 18 characters something like that and then we have left up down right reset select buttons uh, looks like a power LED um, that pot I'm assuming is for contrast to this LCD and it is on an Arduino Uno shield format slick this seems to be made from a company called D1 Robot I'm gonna to have to start with a sketch a demo sketch from these guys if I can find one or I'll have to reverse engineer where all the pins go um, yeah let's uh, let's go and do a little bit of searching and uh, if I can find an obvious demo sketch I'll light this up we'll see 1602 LCD with keypad shield board blue backlight for Arduino 
Dumelinovi. I could never pronounce that. That's the Arduino Dewey uh, robot uh, from, oh my god, Xlane J2016 G, or something like that. Zoom in on that if you really want to do it. Or follow the link. I'll just put a link to it. Um, currently, he's selling it for $3.72. I bought it at auction for $2.72. Basic 16 character by 2 line black on green display. But it also says it's got a blue backlight. Weird. Uh, you know, this is the extremely common parallel interface chipset. Okay, so it's not SPI. Interface code is free freely available. Yeah, if you know which pins it happens to be wired out to. Hmm. Okay, time for more research. After a short amount of Googling, I found this thing on DF Robot, which I guess makes a certain amount of sense since... It's actually labeled D Robot on the one that I've got in front of me. Um, they're selling it for nine ninety at the moment. If you want to buy it from the original seller, people who probably created it, maybe. Who knows with these Chinese things? Anyways, that's that's it right there, pretty much. And I scrolled down to find some information about it. The and in their wiki they have some code which is awesome um so i've uh copy and pasted this code straight into the ide and dumped it into an uno that i happen to have lying around and slammed this thing on top of it and uh well let's take a quick peek at the code here so it uses the liquid crystal library um pins eight nine four five six seven uh eight and nine are the reset and enable i think it is and four five six seven of the data pins um and then it's defining the buttons and stuff like that this is interesting the buttons aren't on digital pins as you would assume they are in fact on a single analog pin so they're pulling a resistor or I don't know exactly I couldn't see it on there it seems to be there's a, a voltage divider that they're cutting in or something like that um, anyway the voltage there's the uh, the button definitions anyway regardless um, and then just uh, a switch case uh, if this then print that if this then print that blah 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 all the way down so let's uh, oh and it's also printing a uh, a one second timer since power turned on or printing every second and then just printing stuff on the screen okay let's go and take a look at it and see if it actually works so here it is i'll switch the power on to it and it says push the buttons now getting this thing running it confused me for a little while but then I, it occurred to me, let's just check the contrast. And it was fully at zero when I first got it. Crank the contrast down. So it was looking like that, but actually, let me change hands here. So you can see what I'm doing. If I bring the contrast back up to where it's supposed to be, multiple turns, there we go so that threw me off for a little while but anyways uh so push the buttons so select button left up down right this reset button is not a button that identifies itself as reset it in fact is the processor reset if i push that it'll reboot like that that is the same as pushing this button on the uno like that which is a little awkward if you want to turn this into some kind of a game pad toy thing or whatever or a remote control unless i suppose you pad it out and make little shafts that push down through your uh, through your casement onto those buttons but anyway that could uh, that could come in handy for some sort of a project or other if nothing else it's a it's a handy little display although saying that 
it uh, pretty much obscures most of the rest of the pins. Some of them are broken out up here. Uh, what is that? D1, or sorry, yeah, D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Although 4, 5, 6, 7 are in use by this guy here. And the analog pins are available down here as well, except for A0. But that's okay because it's being used by these buttons anyway. We got time for one more here. This is a whole bunch of letters and part numbers. Charger is what it says it is. Fairly well wrapped anyway. Oh, it's a little power bank kit. Well, actually it's a power bank. There's not really much kit involved here, is there? It looks like it takes two 18650s in parallel. There's an output voltage and an input voltage and an LED. And it's not hurt by being dropped onto the floor. Okay, let's uh, grab some 18650s. Here's some that I salvaged from a laptop earlier. So let's find a couple that are fairly close to the same Let's see, those two are pretty close. Just because, oh yeah, that one I sort of looked inside of, but that's okay. So, theoretically, you just put these guys in here in parallel. And it should light up. Let's, uh... Let's grab something for it to, oh, and a charger doctor. Yeah, let's grab that too. Um, show me some volts. It's not showing volts, okay. There, now we got some draw. 5.08 volts, 5.1, something like that. 20 milliamps, 19 milliamps. That's reasonable for an LED. Hey, I've got one of the, I've got one of those uh, USB test loads around here that I haven't had a chance to use for any real testing. Well, let me break that out. So here we have the Rui Ding USB load, intelligent load. So I'll plug that in. It looks like it's already set for. 40 milliamps. So we'll start cranking up the load. There's 100 milliamps. Still at 5 volts. Actually, let's just crank up the current here. 260. Okay, there's 500 milliamps. It's still nicely at 5 volts. 750 milliamps. Wow, is that ever flickery on this camera? And still at 5 volts. 1 amp. Still at 5 volts. Oh, right, that's watts. 5 watts. 5.0 powers. Duh. 5 volts, 1 amp. 1 and a quarter amps. 4.9 volts is starting to drop off. So let's leave it in voltage mode and just start cranking, keep cranking the current up here. Okay. There it's dropped to 4.8 volts, 1.43 amps. Let's just take it to 1.5 and see what happens. 1.5 amps, 6.7 watts, 4.4 volts. So it's pretty much dropping off at 1.5 amps. But that's not bad just for a cheesy little um, power supply here. Mini USB port, two times 18650 battery charge holder power bank, box shell case DIY kit from VIP 9029. 
current price is well it varies i paid two dollars and 42 cents for the one that i got um, depending on the color that you get it's either two dollars and 40 cents or two dollars and 53 cents or two dollars and 46 cents or two dollars and 40 cents or two dollars and 46 cents how to make a DOA power bank prepare two 18650s slide out the case bottom install the 18660s and slide the box close the box enjoy your DOA power bank now right then um colors yeah size yeah 5600 milliamp hours that's going to depend entirely on which 18650s you put in there isn't it um charging input 1.2 amps charging output 1.2 amps after discharging it i guess we should also check and just see what the charging current is so i've got this guy set to oops to 5 volts and current limit at 2 amps. I don't think it's going to get there. But we'll find out. So I'll plug that in and hit the go button. It's charging at 5 volts and 200 milliamps. Hmm. These things have been sitting for a while, so they're probably a little bit discharged. Actually, you know, let's stop that. And just find out what the batteries are actually at, shall we? In parallel, I'm not going to be that concerned. Oh, they're at 4.15 volts. Okay, so they are fairly close to fully charged. I'm going to see if there's any in here that are mostly discharged. Okay, I found a pair that are that are sitting below 4 volts. So I'll toss them in. They're reading about 3.8. So let's see what it takes to charge them. There we go. Charging at about 900 milliamps. Okay, that's, that's entirely reasonable. All right, here is today's Mailbag Monday items. Last Mailbag Monday of 2018. 2019 begins tomorrow. Uh, let's check the uh, shipping times on these guys. The DuPont cables took six weeks to get here. The MOSFETs took two months. This BNC to MCX adapter took seven weeks. The LCD uh, slash keypad um, shield took five weeks. And the slow poke du jour, this two cell power bank kit took four whole months to get here. What are you going to do? That's just the randomness that happens. So this is a good haul again. Shop stock, shop stock, um, RF, uh, what is that thing called? Um, software defined radio, uh, adapter. Um, I've got a couple more coming and, uh, then I think I'm going to start playing with that a little bit. I've played with it a little bit, uh, down here in the basement. I'm not getting a lot of signals anyway. So that's why I'm getting these antenna adapters. Power bank, always handy to have a power bank. And this guy, I don't know. I got a good deal on it, but, uh, it'll probably work its way into various little projects and stuff along the way. Thanks again for tuning in every week well every second week anyway um i for the whole year i mean i i really appreciate you guys showing up and and what you've got to say down in the comments is always interesting often informative sometimes humorous um i just i i, I can't express how much i appreciate you guys showing up and uh and clicking the like button and subscribing and doing all those youtube things but mostly showing up in the comments and uh and letting me know what you think of what's going on here and of course the guys in uh over at patreon who go that extra mile and throw a buck in the tip jar now and again helps me uh <laughs> keep me in beer and helps pay for a little bit of this stuff those guys are awesome and i appreciate that too well uh i will i guess talk to you in 2019 thanks for watching Happy New Year! Woo!